So you figured out how to play chords and you can play a simple chord progression, maybe you've even learned how to play inversions, but you're getting bored and you're finding that your left hand is not really doing all that much. You're just playing the same root note and you'd like to do more. You'd like to make your playing more exciting. You'd like to fill up the spaces between the chords. So I have got some tips and tricks for you that are gonna help you to do more with that left hand, to fill up your chord progressions and create a sense of movement. So let's get started. The first thing I wanna teach you is to do more of what you're already doing. So here's what I mean. So you're playing a really common chord progression. Let's say F for two, and C for two, and then G for two, and A minor for two. And that's common in a lot of songs. It's the one, four, five, minor six, you, in just a different order. So you're gonna, this is gonna be familiar to you. Um, so you're playing that chord progression and you want more with your left hand. So what you're probably doing, if you're new to this, is just playing the root note for each chord change. Now you could add more of those root notes but again, you're, it's very simple and you're gonna get bored quickly. So let's play with a different rhythm pattern in the left hand. Let's start playing notes on the and, and it's gonna make things sound a little more energetic. And here's what I mean. We're gonna go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So you see I added the note on the and, which gives it a, just a different feeling. And already it's seeming a little more interesting and a little more energetic. So from there, we're gonna move on to another little trick you can use. And this actually builds on what we just learned. So it may feel really strange for you at the beginning to get used to playing these root notes on the and. One and two and. So take as much time on this step as you need before moving on to the next one so that you can be comfortable and confident. So once you've got that sorted out, we're gonna look at what I call a passing note. So you've played or one and, and you're gonna get to your A minor here. And what we have is a move from an A minor to an F. And these notes, if you look at my left hand, are a third apart. So meaning there's only one scale note in between those two notes. So what you can do is you can play that scale note as a passing note. You're gonna pass through to get to your next root note. And it's gonna make it really feel like you're going somewhere and it's another tool you can use to fill the spaces. So this happens on the and, watch this. So starting on E minor, we're just gonna move down, step down, pass down with that passing note. One and two and one and two and, and that's how that works. So it takes a little time to get used to. It's a muscle sort of coordination, almost a hand independent skill. So practice that over and over. And I like to use this trick anytime there's a distance of a third because it's really natural just to walk down. Next, let's take a look at using other notes of the chord beyond the root note to play in your left hand. And this is, again, a skill that we're building on the idea of playing these notes on the and rather than on the main beat. So we've got an F chord, which has the notes F, A, and C. And we're playing the root note in our left hand. So what we have are three notes, not just one, that are gonna sound good with this chord. So here's what I mean. If I'm on F, I can choose to go up to the third. And it sounds really neat. It sounds like I'm going somewhere. Um, so if I were to move from the F to the C and use that little trick of using a different chord note in transition, it'll sound like this. And you can do the same thing. We're moving now from C to G. So I'm gonna go one and two and one, right? And then you can use your passing note here. So what we've done is I've used just single root notes where they belong on the beat. I've used skills where I'm going on the and, on the off beat. I'm using passing notes where it's appropriate. And now I'm playing with using different intervals of the chord to fill up the space. And it also works really well with the fifth. So instead of playing the root and the third, I might go from the root to the fifth. Here's how it sounds. Now be mindful as I do this, that the fifth note of the chord is often 
the note that's coming up as the root note in the next chord that I'm gonna play. So you can see how this fifth leads us into the chord that we're gonna move into. So it's really, really neat how it sounds. Watch, from F to C. So I'm gonna play F, and then I'm gonna drop the octave to play the C again. G, I'm gonna play the D there, and then I'm gonna move to the A minor. So there it doesn't match the next chord, um, but it's complementary. it sounds really good. And then I can pass down and back my root. So there I just used a mixture of thirds and fifths. So I'm gonna do that progression again really slowly and I'm gonna talk you through what I'm doing. So I'm gonna start with the root note. F, jumping up the fifth, and next chord, which is C. So the fifth of my first chord is actually the root note now of my second chord. I'm gonna use the third of the chord that I'm on, which is C, to transition to G. And here I'll use the trick of fifths again. So I'm gonna go up to D and then A minor. Here's a perfect opportunity to use that passing note as I travel down to F. I'm gonna use the fifth here again and the third to get to G. And you can do this in any combination and in, in any order. So as long as you're using a note that sounds complementary to the chord you're playing, so I'm simply basing that off of the chord notes. If I'm playing a C, my options to play are the root note C or E or G. E is the third, G is the fifth. And the rules apply for all of the chords. And I love this idea because it really helps you to have the option of using just a little bit of an alternative to your root note, or you can use that in between every change and it'll sound really full and busy, like there's a lot going on. So you can adjust this to suit the mood of the song you're playing. The last thing I wanna show you is octaves. Now, you've seen me do this already in this lesson because it's so second nature to me now. Uh, Adding an octave fills in the space. It makes things sound really full. It allows you to create like a deep sound. You can go down a full octave as you chord, or you can split the octaves, playing the notes separately, as a part of the whole process of using those passing notes and those thirds and those fifths. So let me show you what I mean. So let's go back to basics for a second and just play the root notes. So really simply, just using those root notes, Right? But what happens if I just add octaves instead and I keep them sort of close? Watch this. All of a sudden, things sound richer. Now what happens if I take that octave down an octave? Right? All of a sudden, it becomes epic. Add the passing note in. Right? So all of a sudden, you've got this energy and this depth to your playing. Now, look what happens if you take that octave and you separate it and play them broken and also use some of those really neat things that we've learned with the third um, and the fifth. So watch this. I'm gonna start with an octave and I'm not gonna get too crazy yet. Now I'm breaking them up and playing on the and. One and two and, one and two and. Sounds really nice, right? So now, let's see what happens if we use a combination of fifths and octaves. Watch this. So, F, and there's the fifth, which is going to carry me to the octave of the next chord, because look at the fifth of C is the root note of G. So now I'm playing the octave in reverse. Watch again. So just a normal octave. Now the fifth, which connects us to our next chord. I'm gonna do the fifth here again. Sounds great. So as you can see, there are unlimited possibilities. You can mix and match these skills. You can take them or leave them. You can use them in excess or sparingly, but have fun and experiment would be my encouragement to you. So you can use this on any chord progression in any key. I would love to hear how this went for you. If you found these tips helpful, please leave your comments below. I love to read them and answer them back. Um, enjoy and we'll see you next time. Bye.